Hey everyone again, this video here is a very, very special video because this video here, we will hear from Torpen's update, the new post I will have here to read it out to all of you. But this video here will not only be an update from Torben Sundergaard himself, but this video will also be an update from Lena Sundergaard, Torben's wife. And I hope that you're really looking forward because this is a very special video where we will hear from Lena herself, where she will share from her heart what they have been going through because it's one thing to hear from Torben. We know that Torben is in jail and it's, and it's really challenging for him. But one thing we need to also remember that Torben has a wife, Lena. Lena, she has to also go through this. It's not only Torben has to go through this, but it's also Lena and her whole family, the kids, the children, all of them are going through this. So I really, really hope that this will be an encouragement video for all of you. So the way we are gonna do it is that first of all, I'm gonna read out the new update from Torben himself, that where I have a new text from him. Then after I will read Lena's update after Torben's new update. So I really encourage you to stay in this video, to listen from the beginning to the end. Before I going into Torben's and Lena's update, I just want to share something, something that is on my heart, something that is so, so, so important as a part of the calling uh, of being a disciple of Jesus. Because one thing we hear from Torben, what he's going through, but it's something that is very common that God has called all of us to go through things. And I know that it can look different, but it is a calling for everyone. First of all, I just want to start to say this. What has God called us? I see there are two things. There are two things in our life that God has called us as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Number one, God has called us. Jesus had called us to go out and bear much fruit because Jesus said, as Father sent me, now I send you go out and bear much fruit. And when we talk about bearing fruit as the disciples, there we talk about to go out, to preach the gospel, go out to make disciples, multiply, go out, heal the sick, cast out demons, finding a personal peace, building the kingdom of God here on earth. This is fruit that we are called to bear as a disciple of Jesus Christ. This is not just few people. This is for everyone. But we are not only called to bear fruit. I see there's another thing that God has also called us. As much as we are called to go out and bear fruit, we are also called to go and grow in roots. When I'm talking about grow in roots, I'm talking about growing in character. Growing character, there we talk about humbleness. We talk about holiness. We talk about growing in patience. We talk about growing in love, having a servant heart. We talk about growing deeper relationship with our Father in heaven. Have a deep relationship because our calling is not to only go out and heal the sick, preach the gospel, cast out demons, and make disciples, which that is a calling, yes. But our calling is also to know the Father because Jesus says, this is what you are called, to knowing Him. We are called to knowing Him, not to know about Him, but to know Him, to have a deep relationship, to grow in more roots, in character, to grow in holiness, but to also grow in relationship with Him. This is a calling that God has called us. This is a calling that Jesus has called us as His disciples. And I truly believe that this is so important that we truly need to focus on both. We cannot only focusing only go out and bearing fruit, bearing fruit, bearing fruit, but we cannot either focusing only to go out and growing roots, growing roots, growing roots, but we need both. But try to imagine this. Think about this. If you look at a tree, if you look at a huge big tree, often when you analyze the tree, you often analyze the tree according to what you see. The way you look at the tree, you, the very first thought come in your mind is that you think, oh, look at the tree. How big is that tree? How beautiful is that tree? How many fruits is on that tree? Wow, it is so beautiful. This is often what we think when we look at a tree. Why? Because we, anal we analyze for what we see with our physical eyes. But not many of us try to think about this. When we look at a tree, we don't often think. The first th thought doesn't always come in our mind when we look at a tree. Oh, how beautiful are the roots? How big are the roots and so on. No, we don't often think about roots as the very first thing when we look at the tree. 
Why? Because roots is something more that grows in secret. Roots is something that grows under the ground in secret. But listen, that is the same thing with our character. Character is something that really grows in secret in a relationship with Him. Character often grows in a secret when we go through desert time period, when we go when we go to a secret place, when we spend time with Him, or in our daily life, in our secret life. It's not often on the stage with a pulpit and the mic in our hand that our character grows. And try to think about this. For a tree to grow and bear more fruit, that that tree needs to grow deeper roots. Because if the tree grows, but the root doesn't go deep enough that reach to the source, I guarantee you, when the storm comes, that tree will fall with its pride. When the desert season, when the dry season comes, that tree will not survive. So that's why, yes, it's good for a tree to grow and become big and have a lot of fruits. But listen to this, remember this, for a tree to stand through every season, it needs to grow in deeper roots. And that is the same thing with us as a disciple of Jesus Christ. For us that we can grow and bear even more fruits, we need to also be willing to grow in deeper roots, to grow in deeper when it comes to in character. You know, let's look at, for example, Joseph's life in the Bible. I like when Torben often, you know, you have heard Torben's update. And here we often hear Torben come with the example of Joseph's life. When God called Joseph, what happened? We see that God gave Joseph a dream. And there we see when Joseph received this dream, at the beginning, Joseph was really excited. But at the same time, we can also see in Joseph's character in the beginning that Joseph was really, really proud. Joseph was somehow really, really proud that he went to the, his brother and bragging to his brother, I really got a dream and in this dream I saw that you are bowing down for me and so on. And of course the brother got really, really jealous and angry. But what happened? Yes, it is true, this dream came from God. But that dream did not come true from one day to another. And this is often the same thing with us. You know, God has put in calling in our hearts, in your hearts. But I don't know about you, but for example, for me and for many other people, when God called me, when God put a dream in my heart, a longing in my heart, a calling as a being a disciple of Jesus Christ, something about, for example, when it comes to traveling around the world, something that God has really put in my heart, it did not happen from one day to another. <laughs> you understand what I mean? It just didn't happen from one day to another. It was like a process where God has to also prepare me, where God has to prepare other people. Same way God has to prepare Joseph in order that he really truly can step into the calling what God has called him. And what happened before he really stepped into the calling? What happened, first of all, what happened is that the brothers took Joseph and threw him into the pit. Into the pit. And what does pit stand for? Pit stands for preacher in training. That's what the word stands for. Preacher in training. Pit. And how often have we not experienced that God has somehow led us to a point that we experience that we are in a pit. Preacher in training. That this is a preparation, as it was a preparation for Joseph, where God was leading Joseph all the way to the land of Egypt. And what happened with Joseph? When Joseph came to the land of Egypt, then in the beginning, then it started to seem to be going well, that he started getting position. But we know the Joseph story that the Potiphar's wife tried to seducing him, but he didn't want to because he said, how can I sin against a holy God? And he did not want to go to Potiphar's wife to lay down with her. But what happened instead in all of it, one more time, Joseph was, was thrown again to the pit of the dungeon of the prison. And there he was there for years after years. Try to imagine, Joseph was thrown to the the prison pit and there we could complain about if we were him and think about what is happening what is happening but again sometimes when we are in a pit we don't always see the full picture but pit is often time of season to grow in character 
to grow in roots, to grow in the relationship with him. As the same thing with Joseph. And what happened when Joseph came out of the pit one more time, out of the prison, there God took him. And he took him to the top where God gave him the authority through Pharaoh, where he got the authority, uh, almost like the whole land of Egypt. And there, there we could see that a calling, what God has called Joseph, that calling became fulfilled. And there we see how everything, like from the beginning on to the end with, from, with Joseph, we can see that God was with him all the way through, through from the beginning to the end. And this is the same thing with us, guys. We, we are called to go out and bear fruit. Yes, but we are also called to grow in roots, to grow in character. And every season looks different from every person. And that's why some of us are really in a season to grow in fruits. And some of us are really to grow in a season of roots. Where you don't see many fruits in your life. But you really experience a kind of desert time period. You really feel like you are in a dungeon of pit spiritually. But this is where God is teaching you to trust in Him. This is where God is somehow pruning you. You know, as the Bible says, for a branch to bear even more fruit then the Father has to cut things off to prune you so you can grow even more fruits. And this is the same thing with us. And that is what we believe the same thing when it comes to our good friend Torben Sondergaard. So Torben is in a journey. We are in a journey. So I really also hope that through this, as what I'm going to read now, that this can really encourage you to encourage to never give up, to continue to go and bear more fruit, to continue to go and to grow even more deeper roots. So guys, let's go straight into Torben's update, what he has to say, what he wants to share from his heart one more time. And then after, I will share Lena's update. And the headlines start with this. It is very hard for us right now, since I did not come out this week, yet as hoped. But God is working patient in us. Update from Baker's County Jail, day 30. I hope and pray that you all are good out there, and that you are seeking God our Father and obeying the call we all receive from our Lord Jesus Christ. He has so much uh, for all of us. I have seen God's faithfulness the last month, even though it has been very hard. But not only the last month, I have seen God's faithfulness the last 27 years as I have walked with God. And we know He is faithful also this time. But this doesn't mean that things aren't hard. And right now it is really hard for us. Our faith is being tested and tried. We have set our hope that I would get released this week, but yesterday we heard that it will not happen. It might be the end of the next week at the earliest. This was a very hard blow for all of us, as we really had hoped and prayed that it would happen this week. And we know many of you out there are also praying for us, but God is still faithful and He knows best. It was really hard for my wife Lena, also yesterday, as she really misses me. It has also been hard for her these last weeks. And today she was crying when we spoke. We were both crying. I really encourage all of you out there to remember the wives and families of those people like me who are serving our Lord Jesus Christ out there. We often forget that they also pay a price being alone at home. And they also experience the loss where they miss us and hear of the persecution and everything that is going on. So it's not easy for our families. But I know many of you have been remembering my family during this time, and I'm truly thankful for that. God is right now taking us through a time of trials, and it is hard. This is like a long fast, but just harder. Like with a fast, our faith is being stretched and tried. And like with a fast, we see good fruit on the other side. This is also what we're holding on to here this time. Our patience is really being stretched these days, but we need patience, not only faith, but patience and faith. Faith and patience. After Hebrew chapter 11, the faith chapter, we read the first verse in chapter 12. Let us run with patience 
the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes, it is with patience that we run the race that is front of us. It is through faith and patience we will inherit the promise as we see in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. So it's not only faith we need, we also need patience. And it's not only by faith we are running the race, it is also with patience we are running the race. And it is with having our eyes on Jesus and not the circumstances around us. And right now it is not fun. We are just waiting for me to come out and for us to be together again. But we cannot do much than believe in God's work and know that He knows what is best. James chapter 1 verse 3 to 4 says this, Knowing this, that this testing of your faith produce patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And in James chapter 5 verse 10 to 11 says this, As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Yes, these are some very powerful verses. And truth we will hold on to while we are waiting for the promise that I can come out and be with my family soon again. And that God, He will use this in His kingdom. When these verses talk about the promise, they are talking about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the promise above all other promises we have. That one day He will return and set His kingdom here on earth. But we can also use these verses in what we are standing in here. Thank you all for your prayers and support to me and my family, especially my amazing wife, Lena. Thank you that you have not forgotten us as time is going on. Your prayers, gifts, and greetings mean a lot to us. We truly feel your love towards us in this time. Let us all pray for the church that people out there will step into everything our Lord has for them, our real life, the follow me Jesus life we read in the book of Acts. See more in our movies here. Pray the church leaders and networks will see what God is doing here, that normal Christians are becoming disciples all over the world and seeing amazing fruit as we see in this video my friends did the other day. So here Torben mentioned the two of the links you can see on the description with this video and Torben continued to say here, Make me proud and be bold out there and proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Follow Jesus with everything you can, even when it's difficult and costs everything. Jesus has never promised us that this life will be easy, but He has promised us that He will be with us, and this is what we see. This life is not easy, but He is with us. Don't listen to those teachers out there who only talk about blessing, blessing, blessing and say that it will always be easy when the Bible says very clearly that it is through many trials that we will enter into the kingdom of God. Like we read in Acts chapter 14 verse 22. Strengthening souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter in the kingdom of God. And we have a great reward awaiting us in heaven as this earth and everything one day will disappear. But it's those who do the will of God who remain. So a little update from here. I love you all out there and are truly thankful for your prayers and support. Yes, I did not come out this week yet, but we know that God is faithful and He is in control and that He is trying our faith and working in patience in us and this should lead good fruit in the future. We encourage you to keep trusting in God's faithfulness and that the good work He has started in us, He will finish. Let us all be disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ and run the race that is front of us. It's not a hundred meter race. It's not a half marathon or marathon. The race that is front of us it, is the hardest race we will ever run, but let's run it with patience and run so we can get the crown of righteousness our righteous Lord has for 
all who are waiting for His appearing. God bless you all out there. Keep praying for me and my family and my release. And thank you for your support. It means a lot to us. And I will keep you updated what is happening. Torben Sandegar, disciple of Jesus Christ. So guys, this is a, an update greetings from our good friend Torben Sandegar. But I also, as I said before, we also do have an update greetings from Lena Sandegar, Torben's wife herself, where I have a text there where she wants to share from her heart to all of you. And I just want to also say, yes, guys, let's continue remembering Torben to pray for him and to remember what he's going through, but not only Torben. Let also at the same time remember Lena and her family, what they are going through. Because what Torben is going through, what he is paying the price, Lena and her whole family are going through the same thing and also paying a high price. I know we often hear Torben, Torben, Torben. And this is true what's happening with Torben. But also remember, Lena and her whole family are paying a high price. So as much as we remember to pray for Torben, let's also remembering and pray for Lena and her whole family. So let's go straight into the update greetings from Lena Sondergaard. Greetings from Lena Sondergaard. And Lena says here, First of all, we want to say thank you so much for all who are praying for us and sending us greetings and supporting us. We appreciate that a lot and still need your prayers and encouragement in this season. In the midst of all the trials, we really see God's faithfulness and that He is taking care of us also through the body of Christ. We need each other as a body of Christ also for the time that will come. God is looking after a people who is willing to lay everything down for Him and surrender all to Him and are willing to go wherever He leads so He can use us for the purpose He created us for, exactly for this time. After that is said, I want to encourage you, don't fear for what will happen if you surrender everything. Don't worry. Jesus said, seek my kingdom first and do my will then i will give you what you need and that is for sure right we have experienced that again and again like people that know me well often quote me for i am known for saying god is in control and god is faithful and i know that's right also this time i have seen that again and again surrender everything to him and do His will, and God will be in control of your life and take care of you and show His faithfulness again and again. It's part of God's character. Even if it's very hard to go through this trial, we know that God prepared us for it, and that is His goodness. Like God prepared David before he was going against Goliath, He will not set us over more than we can handle with His help. So I will really encourage you to give him everything. Fulfill the call he has for you and keep running the race no matter the cost. Keep running. Don't look back. Keep your eyes on Jesus and his promises. You will see afterwards it's so much worth it. And you can enjoy the fruits God is bringing through it. You can trust him. He is faithful. I will end up with saying, Thank you so much for your prayers for us all. We still need it. Please pray for Torben's release may happen fast and our asylum case to be approved fast too. God bless you, Lene Sundergaard.